and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Hannick, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Don't leave me hanging, Brad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Today we're going to talk about the best five-minute walking balance exercise mm -hmm. after a stroke or foot drop. This is to help prevent falls, right. which is a real danger actually after you've had a stroke or if you have foot drop, you're, you're very high risk for that. Right, and it'll help improve your walking and gait. So if you're new to our channel, oh, please take you. a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, if you get a chance, go to bobandbrad.com. This week we're giving away a knee glide. This ah. is a device you're going to need if you just had a knee replacement or knee surgery or right. preparing for that. Absolutely, Bob. You talk about Brad. All right, you go to bobandbrad.com, go to the giveaway section, and you can sign up for the contest. Go to Facebook. The contest will be pinned to the top of the page. If you go to Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, we have a 60-second version of our program. Brad's showing a little bit of the knee glide. It can actually go up on the stand here and Ooh. get different angles, and you can turn it around. And, and Bonus. The hamstring. So yes. it's got all sorts of cool things. Bob, can we get on with the program? Yeah, let's go. All right, here we go. So you may have noticed I have uh, three sticks here with some, I guess we're going to call it pink Actually, duct tape on there. I thought you had four sticks. Four. Did I say three? <laughs> three, yeah. Eh. The Things are happening, it. Bob, upstairs Sorry. for me. Anyways, uh, <laughs> these are key for the uh, uh, technique and the exercise we're going to do. Very simple. You can just... Uh, Tell just, them how they make these, right? Yeah, they're just wood. Or Actually, these are that other plastic material. But I, I just went to a local uh, box store like a Menards, if you know what that is, where a building supply, and you can buy these for about... I think $3 yeah, for and they eight were, foot. Oh, they were eight foot because it looks like you have the, yeah. the thing on there. Oh, oh. yeah. And I just, you do have to cut them. Cut them, sure. About two foot long. And then I just put a piece of tape on there. Depending on the color and the color of your floor, you want to make it so you can see them clearly. So you um, put some tape on it. All right. There. Exactly. All right. So, so um, I'm going to step out. Yeah. So, you know, if you're having problems when you're walking, uh, you know, if you've had a stroke, uh, sometimes you have foot drop as a result of a stroke. You may have foot drop as a result of another uh, issue, which, uh, you know, there's a number of different things. Neuropathy or something right. like that. But, and, and you have to be to the point where you're actually up and walking, but your quality of walking, and you're, you're not feeling steady, and that foot may be dropping, uh, or, or dragging. you find you're right, dragging, or yeah. you find yourself kind of circumducting to, to get away from it, and you just feel unsteady. You may be using a cane uh, or a walker transitioning to a cane. Uh, this would be a nice exercise. Yeah, you want to get in the habit of picking that foot up enough that you're clearing the floor. Right. Because if you don't, you're going to catch, mm -hmm. and then you're going to go down. Right. Okay? So, Particularly like outside. You know, if right. on a sidewalk, you got a little... even surface. Exactly. When you drag that foot, your toe catches, and that's all it takes for a fall. Yeah. So what you'll need is four of these, two foot long, roughly, to be exact, a chair. It, it would be nice if you had a chair with an armrest. That's optional. And... A smooth floor works best. Carpeting will work, uh, but best to start on a smooth floor for a couple of reasons. It's, it's easier to balance for one, and it works best with the sticks, and you'll see. Right. So you put one stick here right below the chair, and then the other one position like this, and then like this, and then like this. There now, we go. Now, to start this out, I highly recommend you're either going to use a cane, a balance stick, and someone to help. Right. And you can see I have around me, this is not for style. This is a gate belt so that my helper can grab that if I lose my balance to prevent the fall versus grabbing clothing or an so arm. So right now, I'm not going to grab the belt, Brad, but that's what I would do normally is I would... Right, Just Bob would be standing here, actually for the video here, and we don't have enough right. room. Um, and one hand on the belt, your helper does, and just walk alongside and in make sure. you lose your balance. Exactly. Um, I'm going to use the Booyah stick because that works well too, but you can use a cane, uh, works, work, works well. So this is how the system starts. You start in your chair. And just do this. Now, this does not have anything to do with your walking or your gait, but uh, falls oftentimes happen as a result of weakness and getting in and out of a chair is where we're doing it. So we want to practice sit to stand. You know, if you can stand like this 
and come back down with good balance. If you need your cane or your stick, go ahead. Try not to use that. And just do that three to five times. You don't want to get fatigued. If five times is too much, even two or three is just to get that practice to sit to stand, help your strength. Then we'll get on to the actual yeah, How many times training. do we see patients, Brad, that they just plop in the chair yep. and they have trouble getting up after a while? Exactly. And even with the act of walking, those muscles, that'll strengthen the muscles you need with walking. Exactly. So it's, yep. it's, it's, it serves a lot of purposes. Everything in this whole uh, technique, this training, fits together and has a purpose. Yeah. So that does, now we're going to start to walk. Now, the whole key is I don't move one of these. Right. If you even moved it a little bit, your foot was too close to the ground because these are only a quarter inch high. So your foot I don't know if you can see, Brad, you know, because he's having to straddle that a little bit, this is going to prevent his foot from wanting to cross over or scissors, as we call it. Yeah, crossing the, the midline. Yeah, like this. Some guys want to go like this when they're walking. So that's another flaw that would be pointed out with this system here. Right. You know, we should really name this system and, and maybe it'll become very popular. All right. Let's call it the, I want to say Heineck, but I'm not going to say Heineck. I think the Brad. The B&B? &B? Oh, sure. Yeah. Thanks. You're going to include me? Okay. So now we're going to stand up. We're going to walk through it. Walk through it. It's important that you practice your turnaround. Okay, because that's another common, uh, spot, common spot fall. people fall. Lose your balance, right. and then you walk again. Walk again. Now, I put this close to the chair on purpose because when people turn around to sit on their chair, is extremely a high place where falls occur because they get their feet tangled up or they don't line up with the chair. So this is here so that you make sure you lift and you don't drag your foot across. Lift here. We lift here. Turn around and sit. Now you could get more of these if you wanted to and make a longer make a train. Longer trail, sure. Obviously because of the camera we just this is plenty good. So I'll, I'll demonstrate the whole thing. What's nice about these which I don't know if you point out Brad but when you hit them it shouldn't cause you to fall. No. You know right. I mean? it's not like a hitting something you know basically it's going to do that instead right. of uh, falling and that's exactly. why these are good training tools. Right. They're very effective and, and the cost is right. They're very cheap. Okay. So I'll do the whole thing. Someone would be here to help me out. Uh, make sure I don't fall. First, we'll practice the stands. If you have armrests, you may want to push off if you sure. need it. If you don't need it, don't use them because it's going to be better for your strengthening and your balance. Am I in three? Yeah, that's right. Okay. I'll do five. You could do less sure. or you could do more depending on your condition, okay? And then I'm gonna take my time and step through. Wow. Now these are around. also making you step a little bit longer. If, you, if you're if you kind of a shorter person, you could make these sticks in between a little shorter, that, right, Brad? That's a good point, Bob, yeah. absolutely. Turn around. He's having to take a pretty good stride. Right, right. Yeah. and you know. That's that, a good that, thing to work on. Because you could do a step two pattern, but sure. that's going to give you bad habits for, for walking. Sure. But in certain conditions, that might be right. So, yeah, then if that's the case, you might want to even cut these in half sure. and shorten up the middle ones so they they fit you properly. So that's a good point, Bob. Your therapists out there probably should have a, a, a variety. A variety right? e exactly that's right. right. Uh, so let me see. Was there anything else we wanted to cover, Bob? I th you talked you talked about turnaround and you know again this is gonna if you have foot drop either you're gonna use a brace to help lift it up over these yeah or you're gonna learn you got to pick your feet up a little bit higher you, exactly to, to get that yeah. foot through and hopefully your your anterior tib muscle will yeah, get better with time in. and then right. you'll get that dorsiflexion uh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention Bob uh, but I can't remember okay. <laughs> You'll remember it right after the video's over. <laughs> no. You'll say, darn it, that's what I want. <laughs> oh, to I know what it, you can do. And this is probably more for a therapist. Actually, time it. Oh, sure. You know, you know if it takes me the first time, I, I'm going pretty slow and you have to think about it. We do have and, a time uh, test. That, yep. You know, it's called a get up and get go up and test. Go, yeah. And this is this would be like a modified get up and go. But let's say difficult. the first time it took you 45 seconds, which is possible, and you'd bump tw two sticks perhaps. Sure. You'd write that down, and then two weeks later after practicing, it might be down to 20 seconds without bumping any sticks. Then you know you've made progress. It's 
Because a lot of times you can't remember. Right. And how it gives it you a, a goal then to shoot for, and it makes you, you know, proud when you do reach. These Absolutely. So, Absolutely. By the way, Rad and I can fix just about anything except for a broken heart, but we're working on it. And, and we're going to continue to work on it. We're going to call that the B and B's heart fix system. I, I took the weekend off. I didn't work on it this weekend. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Thanks for watching.